Hey, uh, hey, Anthony, do you like do you like my new shirt? Sure, man. It's cool. Could have been better. What was that? I said it could have been better. You want to fight about yeah, it? Yeah, I do. Let's go, chump. <laughs> Hold on a second. We don't need to fight. We don't? All you need to do is go to 86.com and choose from one of their many designs. Franchises range from Skullgirls to Street Fighter and even Blaze Blue. And if you check out 86 through this Twitch channel, use 86.com slash question mark AFF equals four to let them know that Mission Star Podcast sent you. All right. Oops. All right. All right. So move on to our next topic of hand. This is regarding Nintendo and regarding the Joy-Con drift issues that uh, actually kind of kind of went into a lawsuit against Nintendo. You need to, like, reset that timer. <laughs> I did. No, I actually did. I did. Don't worry. Okay. I, got, I got taken care of. <laughs> All right. This is, a, this is a report off of Kotaku.com written by Gita Jackson. Nintendo responds to sufferers of Joy-Con drift. Although it, it's been an issue for some players since shortly after launch, recently more and more Switch owners have been talking about the air issues with the Joy-Con drift, a condition where the joystick on the controller detects movement even though you're not touching it. In response to players' Joy-Con woes, Nintendo advised the Switch owners experiencing Joy-Con drift to visit its customer support website. Quote, At Nintendo, we take great pride in creating quality products and we are continually making improvements for them. A representative from Nintendo took told Kotaku in response to questions about the Joy-Con drift. We are aware of recent reports that some Joy-Con controllers are not responding correctly. We want our consumers to have fun with Nintendo Switch, and if anything fails or anything falls short of that this goal, we always encourage them to visit uh, the website providing a link to, to supports uh, for Nintendo Switch so we can help. Nintendo did not respond to a question from Kotaku regarding potential uh, future fixes at, uh, for this issue. At some point in the last few days, Nintendo updated the front page of its customer support website, placing a prominent direct link to a page that lets you start a ticket to get your Joy-Con pr- repaired. Um, the, the, the previous version of the page as an archive on July 20, uh, 19th only included a link to the troubleshooting page, which more or less asks if your system is updated and then tells you to use the system Joy-Con software recap feature. While standing in your Joy-Con repairs to may fix the issue of, dr- of drift temporarily, some players have said that they're getting Joy-Con back from Nintendo to experience drift again within a matter of months. And an update to this story is the fact that uh, in an in a inside, inside memo from Nintendo, um, they are now giving uh, anybody who wants to send their Joy-Con in, in for repairs regarding uh, the drift issue for free. Um, and I that's my guess is probably it's due because of a lawsuit actually was filed against them for the Joy-Con drift. Um, so, with that being said, um, I know you two have have, have uh, uh, Nintendo Switches. Have you, ex- you guys experienced the Joy-Con drift at all at, at any given point? Well, to be honest, I don't use my Switch a huge amount. I only have two games for it, so I would not have used it enough to cause any kind of issue like that, because it sounds like a hardware failure due to use. Um, I don't experience it. I haven't experienced it, but I know it exists because I've seen my friends experience it. Um, uh, sorry. Um, it, uh, what it does basically is like when you're playing, it'll, it'll disconnect. Or it'll think that you're moving still, like the um, the joystick will be like almost like it's stuck in one direction or the other. Um, it's a uh, it's a bit of a problem, and it is a hardware issue. Now, this article does not talk about how the lo- the lawsuit happened, but they recently came out and said that anybody who experiences Joy-Con drift in any way, shape, or form, regardless of purchasing proof, can send it in for free to have it fixed. Yes. Yes, that was an Intel memo that was recently um, acquired and uh, goes into detail as far as like how Nintendo is now approaching the situation. Um, and yeah, like now, now people, I don't think they made it official yet, um, but I'm pretty sure in due time they will. Uh, and you get to send in your Joy-Cons to get repaired for free and then send them back 
because for many people who are experiencing this issue, they would, what they were doing is that they were doing two things. They were opening up their Joy-Con and then fixing it themselves. Um, either It was just dust apparently that was being caught within the system or within the controllers to hopefully fix, but it, it came a, a problem later on again. Or they were sending it to Nintendo to, and they paid them, what's it, $40 for them to repair it, have it come back, and then have the same issue happen again months later. So... Nintendo, I won't say he's trying to figure it out, but like they're, they see a problem and they're, they're trying to, right now again for free, regarding uh, fixes for, because of the lawsuit happening. Um, it reminds me, I won't say it reminds me very much of, of the 360 Red Ring, because that was a whole different, sto uh, different story, um, but similar in, in some cases. Uh, yeah, I mean, Nintendo... Well, except the Red Ring didn't require a threatened lawsuit to get the free fix. Microsoft literally went like, oh, fuck, we've got issues. Send them into us. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, not at first. Uh, with the Red Ring of Death, the situation with that was uh, it was still a 90-day, uh, like, send in for free. And then you had to pay for extra insurance. And it wasn't until, like... It was like over half of the consoles were experiencing Red Ring. They were like, okay, we're extending it to a year. Yep. So they, it was like right, but like before anyone could actually sue, they, they changed that. Yeah. that well, and that's way. just because to be fair, they, they need to have the, uh, the data there to say if it's an actual issue that we're having, like a, a systemic issue, or is it just a weird one-off situation where somebody's doing something and kind of abusing it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's well, it, it's because failure rates. I mean, all electronics, no matter what they are, have a failure rate. They all do. They have a failure rate out of the box. Oh so, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So bad. they didn't I, know I, if it was I, just a so regular sure. failure rate or if it was like, no, we have a design flaw. <laughs> Turns out it was yeah. design flaw. Yeah. yeah. This this is one hundred percent a design flaw. Yes. Um, and from what I understand, it's because with the, with the switch, the joy cons like can connect and disconnect. Now, if, um, like my buddy, he bought a switch day one and, um, he, he's experienced some of this issue and like to, the, to fix it, he just connect, he just puts the joy cons in the switch, but takes them back out and he's fine for a while. Um, but it's hours of being fine versus like months it happening day. immediately. Yeah. Yeah, um, so it's it definitely is an issue with I would say earlier uh, Nintendo Switches because again I've never experienced it with mine and I play a metric fuck ton of my Switch. Yeah. So well, and it probably has to do with how you treat the how you treat it, the condition that you keep it in, things like that too. Because let's be honest, not everybody is the same when it comes to how they're going to treat their electronics and how they're going to maintain them. True. True, but I would. Not saying anything bad argue. about your buddy because I don't know him, but like, <laughs> right. well, he was experiencing it like shortly after it came, after he got it. Um, that just sounds was... like a faulty piece, like that just faulty out of the box. Well, my that's my point is that this yeah. thing with the thing with the Joy-Con, it's a it's a more widespread issue versus just like a few faulty ones. Like it is a design flaw, an early design flaw, and uh, it, it almost seems like they knew about it. As I remember hearing about it shortly after it came out that there was a small issue with the Joy-Con and whatever, and a lot of people were just like, well, I had to go buy a new set of Joy-Cons, and then they never had the problem again. Um, yeah. So it does, to me, it definitely sounds like a small design flaw out the gate, and it was fixed a few months after that with, with the more production that they came out with. Um, I don't know exactly, but clearly Nintendo knows it's a design flaw with how they're handling it. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the immediate, I don't like, even know why the lawsuit really has to be brought into play here, honestly. Like, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know if Nintendo was denying that it was an issue or what, but it seems like the oh. whole lawsuit thing is just people got a little bit happy and like, I'm going to sue. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, man. Like, it's it's an immediate fucking knee-jerk reaction. And yep. some information about the lawsuit. Uh, this is uh, from Gizmondo re regarding that. Uh, now it seems frustrated as has peaked a law firm, uh, Chemical Schwartz Kerner and Donson Smith uh, had filed a class action lawsuit alleging 
uh, that the Joy-Con, the joysticks on the Joy-Con controls are defective, leading users to experience drift issues. The lawsuit goes on to specify that these defective Joy-Cons may register movement when the joystick is not being allowed, but, but being controlled by the user, thereby interfering with normal play. This suit also alleges that Nintendo is aware of the issue has, and has failed to disclose the problem and routinely refuses to repair the joysticks without charge uh, when the defect manifests and never disclose the material defect to consumers. This lack of support or official acknowledgement from Nintendo has forced Joy-Con owners to seek uh, out their own ways of addressing the issue, and over the past few months, countless tutorials have popped up offering to them how to troubleshoot or fix Joy-Con drift, through, though sadly, these methods don't always work. So yeah, um, no information ever about the lawsuit regarding like, hey, these Joy-Cons don't work as, as advertised. It sounds like boilerplate, we're gonna force it to, we're gonna stick it to them bullshit, honestly. Like, it doesn't really sound, like, as far as I can tell, I mean, this is not such a big issue that I've just been seeing it fucking pop up all over the place. So it doesn't seem like it's really as much of an issue as that lawsuit's making it sound to be. Not to say it's not an issue for those being affected, right. but it, it's it's not literally like Nintendo says this is not this isn't wrong and I have to go buy one or fix one. It's literally just there's a defect here. They're figuring this shit out. I, you know, it almost seems like the lawsuit was activated just to say, just to basically force Nintendo's hand. Yeah, yeah. which it could have easily been like, it, they could have been planning to do this anyways, and the lawsuit just made them do a double time for it anyways. So, yeah, yeah it, I don't think the lawsuit actually plays in this article whatsoever. If they just decide to throw it in there because they can. So one of the things I will say, just to kind of add on to it, I know we're going over time on this, but... Um, I think the reason why people are a bit more arms about it than usual is the cost of the Joy-Cons. If the cost wasn't so high, say it was like 40 say it was like $30, I don't think anybody would bat an eye. But because the Joy-Cons... How much are the Joy-Cons? $80. 70 Is it 7 I, I thought it was 80 Yeah, I I can get one at Walmart right now, a set. Two, two, two Joy-Cons for, for 70 bucks. That's still pretty high. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. Not disagreeing. I'm just saying it's not it's not ten dollars more than that. Right, right. So I think that's part of the reason why people are in uproar about it. Um, I will say this though: the Joy Cons are expensive for a reason. Um, it's not just because like oh, like this is sixty dollars, you know, but it doesn't have motion control. It has a primitive rumble system in it. Like yeah. Uh, it doesn't have an internal battery. Like, there's a reason it's seventy dollars. By the way, FYI, I don't know if you guys can see that. Sixty nine ninety nine. How much? How much were the Wii remotes? Um, fifty a piece. So, for a Wii remote. Okay, so it's twenty bucks more for two Wii remotes, basically. Well, well, not necessarily because a, a single Wii Wii remote was fifty dollars. But the joy the the uh, nunchuck was thirty. Mm. Okay, so for a fully functional for everything you could possibly ever want to do with it, it was the same cost. Pretty much. I'm not seeing the huge issue here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really not that big. Like, of it, like the, the pricing, I'm not seeing any issue with the pricing whatsoever. That seems fair. I can get a normal controller, you know, for forty bucks, but it's not motion control. It doesn't track. It doesn't have IR sensors in it. Like it, it's no, it's it's fine. I, I do understand people being upset about their their controller because it's how you fucking play your games. Well, yeah, and With it's the price point system. Yeah. And I get going to the extent of saying I don't want to spend another seventy dollars on on a controller. Um, that's that sucks when you when you're supposed to yeah. just have one with the system. I totally get that. The price point it being too expensive is ridiculous because. You have to look at the technology within, and then on top of that, the system costs three hundred dollars when it's like this fucking high end system. Like hundred dollars and comes stupid. with the Joy Con. Yeah. So you know what? Forget forget the three hundred. Take seventy dollars off of that. Nintendo is losing money on the Switch when they sell a con when they sell it. But isn't the Switch yep. like the most like successful consoles they've launched in recent time? Uh didn't I, they just like tout that like they beat GameCube 
It beat, it, it, it beat everything up until the 64. I think 64 is still number one. I'm going to look into that right now. <laughs> 